Hello, welcome to my presentation on perpetual motion machines. The first thing I want to do is to cover some of the basics of energy. First of all, I want to cover the types of energy. We encounter energy every day in many forms, mechanical, electrical, nuclear, radiant, such as heat and light, and chemical. With chemical, the energy can manifest itself as reactions between chemicals in a battery to produce electricity, or the combustion of gasoline to produce energy to propel an automobile. And let's not forget the chemical energy we get when we ingest food. But scientists usually group all types of energy as kinetic and potential. Potential energy is the energy stored by an object as a result of its position. Think of the old grandfather clocks that have weights in them. When a person pulled the weight up to the top, the mechanical energy used by that person came from the chemical energy of the food he has eaten. This energy is stored in the weight and gravity will gradually pull the weight back down. The energy of the falling weight will then turn the gears of the clock causing it to keep time. Kinetic energy is what matter has based on its mass and speed. A rock shot from a slingshot will release more energy than if it was tossed by hand. The reason is the faster the object travels, the more energy will be released in the impact. In fact, it has been proven that if an object doubles in speed, the amount of damage uh, due to the energy release will quadruple. Also, if the object's mass increases, then more energy will be released. For example, a bowling ball dropped on your foot would hurt more than a marble from the same height. Here is the perpetual motion machine we'll be examining today. Notice it has an electric motor and connected to its shaft is an electric uh, generator. Notice the conduit running from the generator back to the motor. This will provide the power from the generator to run the electric motor. First of all we need to explore some of the ob obstacles that prevents this perpetual motion machine from running. One of the biggest killers of this type of perpetual motion machine is the resistance of the wires. The heat that you feel radiating from the motor and generator is the energy wasted as heat. This waste is due to the windings not being 100% conductive. Another obstacle we need to overcome is the bearings. The bearings also need to be 100% frictionless. One obstacle most people don't take in consideration is the air resistance. The very air pu being pushed around acts as a brake on the system, robbing power. And one that's difficult to overcome is gravity. Gravity would also act as a brake on the machine. So let's say I developed a superconductor for my windings to make them 100% efficient. And while I was at it, I used those secret 100% frictionless bearings I had laying in my drawer of my workshop and then I moved the perpetual motion machine deep into space between the stars to take care of the problem of the air friction and gravity. Here you can see I have jump started the perpetual motion machine and since I removed all the obstacles it appears to be running just fine. The motor's kinetic energy is being transferred into the generator by the spinning shaft. And the electrical power produced is then transferred back to the electric motor to keep it uh, running constantly. But when I plug a lamp into the generator, the whole system grinds to a stop. The reason is due to the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be converted. 100% of the energy that was produced by the motor went to producing um, electricity. It took 100% of that electricity just to keep that motor running. But when the lamp was plugged in, it robbed some of the power and it also added more load onto on the system, causing the motor to need more power. According to the law of conservation of energy, the only way you could get more power out of this type of machine is to convert the mass of the perpetual motion machine to energy. 
causing it to disappear. I know that some believe that all you need to do is just add another, a larger generator. The problem is that electrical load is still a load, and that load will be transferred to the motor. A real life example of this would be the electric golf cart. Whenever the driver takes his foot off the accelerator, the DC motor becomes a generator. The motion of the electric cart um, continues to turn the motor slash generator, causing it to produce electrical power. This power is dumped through a resistor, causing a load on the motor slash generator, causing the cart to suddenly to slow down. This resistor looks like a coil spring with two electrical wires attached. If you were to raise the seat on an electric golf cart, you can see it. So if by some miracle that we did overcome all the obstacles of a perpetual motion machine, it would only uh, remain a novelty because it could not produce any more power than to run its own self. Conclusion, perpetual motion machines are just not possible. I hope this has been informative and thank you for watching.